Welcome to Japan Politics Explained, where I review recent news and statistics regarding politics and elections in Japan. In today's video, we're going to be analyzing the results of the Yokohama mayoral election and what it means for the future of Japanese politics. Let's start with the basics. Yokohama is a major port city in Kanagawa Prefecture, south of Tokyo, and it is the second biggest city in Japan. It is only 30 minutes away from Tokyo by train, so it's pretty much part of the greater Tokyo area. The Yokohama mayoral election took place last Sunday, the 22nd of August. Usually, regional elections like this one aren't that big of a deal, but the latest Yokohama poll was interesting for three reasons. First is that the election comes right before the next general election slated for this autumn. As the Yokohama mayoral candidates have relatively clear connections to the national political parties, such as Okonogi to the Liberal Democratic Party and Yamanaka to the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan, the race served as a bellwether election to gauge the public. Second, Yokohama happens to be the constituency of Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga. Suga is elected from the Kanagawa No. 2 district, which is near the city center. So people were watching whether Suga's recent streak of high disapproval ratings would also materialize in his own constituency. Lastly, there were eight candidates in the election, and several had strong support, meaning that it made for a very lively election. There was a chance that no candidate would get 25% of the vote outright, which would have triggered a runoff. This is basically unheard of in a regional election, so there was a lot of interest in that. Now for the results. Takeharu Yamanaka, backed by the National Opposition Party, the Constitutional Democratic Party, and others, won the election with 33.6% of the votes. Hachiro Okonogi, supported by Suga and most members of the national ruling bloc, including the Liberal Democratic Party, followed with 21.6%. He was the former chair of the National Public Safety Commission, a cabinet position, which resigned from to run in the race. This was quite an astonishing defeat, given that some pundits initially saw Okonogi to be a shoe-in for the mayor's seat. Incumbent Fumiko Hayashi, backed by a few of the national ruling bloc, struggled at 13.1%, failing to secure a fourth term as mayor. A wildcard candidate, former Nagano governor Yasuo Tanaka, followed closely with 12.9%. <laughs> now let's look at why Suga's preferred candidate for the mayoral seat, Okonogi, suffered a defeat out of the ballot box. There are three main reasons for his loss, and they all have to do with the fact that the Yokohama race became more or less an assessment of the Suga administration. The first is that the issue of casinos, which was initially expected to be the biggest policy issue to be debated in the election, became unimportant. The biggest thing on Yokohama voters' minds, at least until the COVID-19 crisis, had been Yokohama's plan to host an integrated resort, which is a fancy way of saying a casino resort. The city had been regarded as a leading candidate to host a casino under the Japanese government's policy of allowing such resorts to be built in a few locations. A majority of Yokohama citizens were against the casino plan, driven by a pretty successful signature collecting campaign, while the local business community and incumbent Hayashi were for the plan. The election was initially viewed as a referendum on the casino plan, with those voting for the plan voting for Hayashi and those against voting for an opponent. However, Okonogi's entry into the race made the dynamics less clear. Despite the local and national LDP being in favor of the casino plan, Okonogi's campaign was against bringing the casino to Yokohama, saying that the plan did not have the support of the people in Yokohama. So now there was a third candidate, but from a party that was pro-casino but ran as an anti-casino anyway. This confused and turned off many voters. Some pro-casino voters, many of whom are LGP voters, were not supportive of Okonogi's rejection of the casino plan, and voted for Hayashi instead, while anti-casino voters were skeptical of Okonogi's commitment to opposing the plan. In the last mayoral election, incumbent Hayashi campaigned saying that her mind on the casino issue had not been decided, and that she was a blank slate, but she immediately turned in favor of the plan once she re secured re-election. Voters remembered how they were betrayed by Hayashi, so they don't trust Okonogi, whose own party was the main force promoting the casino plan in Yokohama. As a result, the election became less about the casino resort issue and more about something else, and that something else happened to be the Suga administration. The second reason why Okonogi lost is because Suga went out of his way to support the candidate, boosting the government's presence in the Yokohama election. 
Usually, regional elections are less political than national ones, and smaller local policy issues are at the heart of the races. But that did not turn out to be the case. With pro-casino members of the local LDP looking to back Hayashi, the LDP decided not to support a specific candidate as a party. Suga, however, actively expressed support for Okonogi, sending close aides to Yokohama to stump and distribute flyers for him. Suga stressed that this support was given under his capacity as an individual member of parliament, but as PM and the leader of the national LDP, Suga's support effectively meant that the people viewed Okonogi as a government-backed candidate. As I said in my previous videos, the LDP as a party has not lost much popularity amid the COVID crisis, but Suga and his administration has seen approval plunge to extremely low levels, with many citizens dissatisfied with infection prevention measures and the vaccine rollout. With Okonogi clearly backed by Suga, voters saw an opportunity to express their dissatisfaction by voting against Okonogi. The third reason why Okonogi lost is because the opposition bloc was successful in framing the election as an assessment of the Suga administration. Smaller opposition parties such as the Japanese Communist Party and the Social Democratic Party rallied around the CDP's preferred candidate, Yamanaka, uniting the opposition against the LDP. This made the choice of voting for an anti-Suga candidate very easy. Yamanaka ha also happened to be a professor at Yokohama City University who did research on neutralizing antibodies against novel coronavirus. The Yamanaka campaign stressed this fact repeatedly, portraying him as the only coronavirus expert running the in the election. This put COVID-19 policies front and center, reminding voters that they were dissatisfied with Suga's approach to the epidemic. So all in all, the Yokohama elections became a sort of a proxy war for pro-Suga and anti-Suga forces, spelling doom for the prime minister's candidate of choice. Now let's look at what the election results mean for the future, specifically the future of the LDP leadership. Okonogi's loss was a stark reminder that the LDP is sure to lose support under Suga at the upcoming general election, now expected for some time in October. Yamanaka beat out Okonogi even in districts that are Suga's constituency in the lower house. This has prompted several LDP members to consider challenging Suga for party president at the LDP presidential election in late September. Specifically, former party policy chief Humio Kishida has declared his intent to run in the LDP election, despite having been on the sidelines ahead of the Yokohama election. He is seen as the greatest challenger to Suga for the LDP's top seat, with support from his own faction and others disgruntled with Suga's leadership. However, factional politics and the numbers game will likely uh, make it that Suga will beat the challengers, so Kishida's bid may turn out to be largely ceremonial. It remains to be seen how Team Suga will pull off damage control from Okonogi's drubbing at the Yokohama race in the event that he does become the next LDP president and continues into the general election. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments what you would like to see in future videos.